If there's one thing I've learned since getting back into fantasy full-time, it is that having the name Terry as a fantasy author can sometimes lead you down the path of peril because I think Terry Goodkind might be the most hated man in the fantasy community. I can't really attest to that because I've read one Terry uh, Goodkind book and I don't even remember it. I was very, very young. But that's a conversation for another time. What I want to talk about now is Terry Brooks and how I think that maybe his legacy has been undersold and we're going to talk about why now. Hey, what's up, bookworms and fantasy lovers? Mike back today to talk a little more fantasy for you, and namely the works of Terry Brooks. You recognize that name? You probably do because I think just about everyone has heard of the Shannara series in one way or the other, be it just, I heard about that series, I watched the awful MTV adaptation, or, oh yeah, Terry Brooks is awful, I've never read any of his stuff, but everyone told me that that must be true. So yeah, it's true. Here's what I want to talk about with Terry Brooks is you may think that fantasy has always been this thriving thing from Tolkien until George R.R. Martin. No, that is not the case. Tolkien really set the bar so high that fantasy suffered for decades after he finished The Lord of the Rings. The way I usually said is that it may be thriving today, but in the 70s and 80s, uh, before the 70s and 80s, rather, fantasy really died with Frodo, is how I usually had put it. It was a niche thing. No one ever felt they were going to be able to compare to Lord of the Rings. So it was just kind of a dying genre. And a lot of people don't realize this. And um, here is my hot take on this whole thing. Terry Brooks saved epic fantasy. Yes, uh, here's the thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should read Shannara, that it's this great groundbreaking thing, and you're going to go back and you're going to enjoy. This is not a why you should read on Terry Brooks. This is looking at the man's legacy and how I feel like it's kind of lost favor over time, and I just, I just, just I disagree with it. That's all. So what I want to talk about here is... First, let me tell you how I discovered this series. When I finished reading The Lord of the Rings as a preteen, I just wanted more Lord of the Rings. My brother said, well, there's this uh, Shannara series. Uh, it's, it's very similar, is how he put it to me. I think that you'll like it. He said, it's probably actually a little bit more of an easy read, which I'll get into. So I picked it up, and I loved it. Uh, here's the thing. I'm sure if I went back and read it now, I'd probably be frustrated and be like, okay, this is way, way too derivative of Tolkien here. But at the time, all I wanted was more Lord of the Rings. So I was all over it. So this, what this really helped do, though, is it got more people that had never really gotten into fantasy, namely at the age I was in the, uh, or I mean, I wasn't born when the first book came out. I'm, I'm old, guys, but I'm not that old here. <laughs> Let's give me some credit. But uh, so when I read it, the trilogy was complete. Uh, it was already into the uh, the next series after that by the time I discovered. But I read the true original Sword of Shannara trilogy. I read all three of them back to back to back. Loved it. Yes, I saw similarities, but I didn't care. I just wanted dwarves. I just wanted elves. I just wanted all that stuff again, and wizards. And I got it. I got exactly what I was looking for. And again, I'm not a mega fan of Shannara or anything. I stopped reading a couple of books into the follow-up series, which I believe was Heritage. I've never read anything really complete past the original trilogy. But yes, I enjoyed it when I was a young man. I said I was going to reread it when this edition came out, and I got the hardcover, and I just I never did. I never went back to it, and I was like... I feel like if I go back to it now, I'm just going to hate read it and just sit there and pick at it because I am a big time Tolkien honk. I'm not going to deny that. So I'm sure now I'd probably be way more critical of it. And again, this isn't defending that series. What I'm defending is the what Terry Brooks did for this genre. And in my opinion, he took it from life support and made it a thing again. And let's talk about why. I see him really just disrespected so much by the fantasy community as a you know a Tolkien hack and things like that and it just it bothers me it really does because elephant in the room yes that original trilogy is extremely derivative of Tolkien's work i mean almost to the point where it is play by play and i think that that was the goal i mean uh, the publisher del rey actually said that they wanted to have a more marketable and approachable version of Lord of the Rings. Yes, it doesn't even hide it. It was very much trying to be Tolkien for a new generation. 
and it was welcome for all ages. It didn't really matter, but it really got that younger demo who now are old enough to be published fantasy authors and will always say how Shannara was something that greatly influenced them every bit as much as Tolkien did. So, uh, again, it, it isn't going to hold a, a candle to, to Tolkien or anything like that. But again, you have to understand where the genre was when he wrote this story. No one wanted anything unless it was Tolkien. So the fact that he was able to prove that there was a hunger for epic fantasy and that epic fantasy without the name J.R.R. Tolkien on it would sell to a great big mass audience. That's what he was able to achieve. And like I said, I, I, I read it as a preteen. I didn't even care that it was paint by numbers uh, of Lord of the Rings. I was all for it. And I can see that that's why a lot of people probably older than me at the time probably read it and said, you know what? It brings back that nostalgia that I had for Lord of the Rings when I read it as a young man. So I can see that kind of being like just something reminding audiences about what they loved about the genre in the first place. Uh, but I think why it was so important, like I said, is because it proved that fantasy would sell if it didn't have the name Tolkien. And I still contest to this day, we do not get Wheel of Time if this series never happens. Because again, and then even up to 1990, you were not getting published as a fantasy author unless it was reminiscent of Tolkien. That is a fact. I don't think you can really fight that. Uh, there were things... Uh, that were popular, but again, a lot of these things really were either derivative of Tolkien or like just basically very much in the same vein. But I mean, after Sword of Shannara came out, 125,000 sold in its first month. Only Tolkien had put up numbers like that at that point, and he sold 25 million books since. Yes, I know he's put out about a million books, so it feels like that number might be inflated, but again, authors weren't selling very well in fantasy, and no one was even wanting to sign them because they thought. It's a dying genre. No one wants to read this anymore. But uh, I think it only proved that modern audiences, uh, not only that they would uh, read new fantasy, but they were open to reading new ideas. And that's why I feel like, okay, Jordan got Wheel of Time out. And yes, it felt very much like an homage to Tolkien, just like every other fantasy author. But he had the courage to take that left turn with The Great Hunt and make the series his own thing. And it was the first fantasy I felt like didn't feel like Lord of the Rings in that generation. So, uh, but again, I feel like, it, has it aged the best? No, probably not. I haven't revisited it yet. I just think about it, what I remember uh, as a young man reading it. Oh yeah, that's just like Gandalf. Oh yeah, that's just like Gimli. I remember these things, feeling like that while I read it. And I'm sure now reading today would probably be as frustrating as much as it would be just amusing to just be like, wow, did he really just replace the names on some of these? So again, I'm not here to tell you that this is an amazing series, original, and you got to read it. But it doesn't take away the importance of this series keeping the genre alive at its darkest hour. You know, Thomas Covenant was published around the same time and it wasn't selling as well because it was pretty much you know the adult version of that but interest in the genre ramped up and then thomas covenant took off i'm not saying it's because of shannara i just feel like it got more eyes on that and i can't attest to it guys because i haven't read thomas covenant yes it is very very highly highly requested and it'll happen someday it'll happen someday uh but uh you know uh, who else? We had, uh, what, Eddings got popular after this. Feist got popular after this. Catherine Kerr got popular after this. So it really ushered in that next wave of fantasy, and it really helped keep the genre going. And it had took some time, you know, like another decade before people were able to take it away from Tolkien-esque kind of themes. But, you know, we finally got there, and that's where we are today. So uh, Brooks, he, obviously he was inspired by Tolkien, but he's also listed uh, Walter Scott's or... Uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, Alexander Dumas, all kinds of influences. And when you really look at it, I think that you can see those influences in there. But sure, the one thing you're going to feel like is, oh, this is paid by numbers of Lord of the Rings. And I, I can't really deny that. But I think why this series clicks so well with younger readers when it happened is just because it felt more accessible to them. I'm as big a Tolkien honk as you're going to find. And even I will admit that sometimes Lord of the Rings, it can be a dry read. Even as an adult, you can get up there and be like, this isn't really clicking with me. That's why I feel like a lot of modern uh, fantasy readers, they go back and they read Lovecraft. They read Robert E. Howard. They read Tolkien and they say, I just can't read it because they're not used to that style of prose and they can't really get through to it. Brooks made it accessible for longtime fans and for younger fans because, yes, 
I read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings as a young man. But then when I read Shannara, I said, well, this is just like a more streamlined version. This is you know more of a page turner. By no means did that mean it was better. <laughs> I just say as a young man, I appreciated that it didn't feel like as heavy of an investment. So I see why it clicked with those new audiences like it did. And I feel like now that uh, you know Brooks is accused of being a paycheck author, that he mails it in quite a lot. I can't attest to this because, like I said, I haven't continued to read the Shannara series. I'm too scared to go back. I'd like to kind of leave it in my nostalgic memories of, of really enjoying it because I feel like if I went through it now, especially running a booktube channel where you basically put on the critic goggles and you get really, really nitpicky with these things, yeah, all I would do is just kind of shred it apart. So again, this isn't a why you should read. This isn't me telling you you need to pick up Shannara, Shannara and read it. Uh, it's just, I'm saying that I feel like Terry Brooks, he needs some respect put on that name because he really has just become a punchline for the fantasy community, and I disagree with it. The man deserves our love and respect because a lot of those series that you love today probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And yes, I will die on that hill. I mean, I think he deserves a higher legacy than this. He really, really should be more well recognized. And I feel like if you talk to a lot of the popular fantasy authors today, like Sanderson, people like that, they're going to tell you, yeah, of course, of course, Terry Brooks was an influence. They're never going to say that, oh yeah, he's a hack, right? Like you get, you get some of the more opinionated fantasy authors that, you know, you know who they are. Uh, they'll probably say really shitty things because they would like, they like some high fives on Twitter and stuff like that. From people who really criticize this man all the time, I really believe that none of them have actually read it. That's just kind of falling in line, you know, with everyone everyone else has said. I always say pick up the things, read them, decide for yourself. But again, I think if you're in your your late 20s to, you know, early 40s, you're probably, that's when you're, you, you become really highly critical of everything. Uh, spoiler alert, guys. You become highly critical of everything the older that you get. I, I think for sure you'd go with this and you'd read it and you'd be like, this is, this is hot garbage or whatever. Again, what I'm trying to analyze here is the man's legacy. He deserves... A uh, really, really high place in the fantasy community, in my opinion, for keeping the genre going when it was basically dead. If you've read it recently, sure, let me know what you think because uh, I know that there are some people on the Discord that have said they're going to read it for the first time, and they're uh, you know not quite so young. Let's put it there. And <laughs> I'm interested to see what they think about it. I was planning to go back later this year and read some Eddings for the first time. I never read Eddings, uh, the um, the Belgarian. And a lot of people said, you know, I feel like that's something you kind of had to read when you were younger. Some people said that kind of a feist. Uh, that's how I, I usually describe Shannara. So I'll be interested to see how it feels. Uh, so again, if you go in just not expecting the world and yes, knowing it is going to feel like Lord of the Rings to you, there you go. So uh, if you've read it recently, let me know if you read it when you were younger and you want to just kind of talk about it or whatever. Or if you think that I'm being too kind to him. I, I don't know. I, I think he deserves respect for what he did. And uh, I know a lot of people are going to give Stephen Donaldson that credit because, you know, apparently Thomas Covenant is still cool and Shannara is not. But uh, I, I feel like uh, those two kind of go hand in hand and that, that they, they kind of kept the genre going when it was dead. And that's where I am, guys. So drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you there.